from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Michael Knox. I'm a Jesuit and director of Martyr Shrine in Midland, Ontario. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Jose de Medeiros. This Mass is offered in memory of Jose, Maria, and Elizabeth de Medeiros. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today across the country we gather in this moment of prayer, turning from our daily lives to be with Christ in his Holy Eucharist, in his living word. As pilgrims on this journey of faith with Christ crucified and risen in this Easter tide, we turn to him now with our strengths, our hopes, but also the times where we have fallen and count on his mercy and his love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with proclaiming the word testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed and reviled him in protest, he shook the dust from his clothes and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the official of the synagogue, became a believer in the Lord, together with all his household. And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul became believers and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His right hand and his holy arm 
have won him victory. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory joyful noise to the Lord all the earth break forth into joy song and sing praises the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father, he said to his disciples, A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying to us, A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They said, What does he mean by this, a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, are you discussing among yourselves what I meant when I said, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Around the country today, as people sit in their homes and watch this Holy Mass unfold or listen to the words that are spoken, and those here in this church, and indeed in the church around the world, is filled with people who in their lives know someone, perhaps even themselves, who have turned from God who have made a conscious choice to leave their faith, who have grown up, as it were, and said to themselves, I can make my own choices. I can decide what my life will be like, and religion will not be a part of it. Others sit around at bars or in social events and say, oh yes, my grandmother used to take me to church. And they're asked, are you still going? No. 
That's when I was a kid. And then there are those who we may know or know throughout the history of humankind who have made active choices when faced with an opportunity to embrace Christ in their lives, knowingly turned away. And there are even those who have caused, at that effect, great harm to others and who we hope will receive the great love and mercy of God. And in today's first reading, as well as the Gospel, we gain a glimpse into how our heart should hold people who we love and even those who perhaps we dislike that have turned from the faith. The apostles, as they went preaching throughout the lands after the time of Christ, were warned by Jesus himself earlier that if they persecuted me, they shall persecute, persecute you also. He warned them, the master was persecuted, therefore how can the subject be treated any differently? And today we see that Paul moves out into the world to preach and is rejected. And yet the story does not end there, for in the gospel, as we hear the living word of God, we are reminded in the message of Jesus, something that was true for him in the moment, as he warned the disciples and his apostles of his coming death, but something that is true for all of us today, namely this, that anyone who pushes God away, even among those who pushed him into the place of his death, even though he may be gone for a little while, he will return. Even though there may be a time of suffering in our hearts for having pushed God from the center of our lives, of having chosen to walk a different path, there will also be a time of joy. For just as Christ rose from the dead and transformed the universe in his great gift of love, every day he is present to us and offers that same chance. Though there may be those among us or even us here at times in our lives who have said, God is dead for me. He is ready always in love, arms stretched open to embrace you, to rise up with you, and to give you new life and new faith. Conscious of that Lord who is always with us, let us stand and offer our prayers to him. Let us pray for all those in our TV and internet audience who have asked to be remembered in our prayer intentions book. For them and the desires they present to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for all those who we know that have died, all those we know that are suffering from illness at this time, that they may feel risen up in the loving arms of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the poor, for those around us in our community who lack support and the resources they require to live in freedom, that they may find them in God and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for peace in our world, in all the places where there is suffering and want, where there is war and victim, that Christ the King may resurrect in faith those in need and bring them to peace and safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear we take a moment in silence to offer our own prayers to the Lord. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the light of the Spirit, you made each of us in your own image and planted in our hearts deep desires. We have offered some of them to you now aloud, and others remain quiet in our hearts. May they come to fruition through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these most sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Jean de Brébeuf, Saint Gabriel Lallemand and their companions, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, for whom we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer by Henry Francis Light? Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal mystery, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is a pleasure to have celebrated this Eucharist with you, and all of the Jesuit Fathers at Martyr Shrine wish you every blessing in the coming days, and perhaps the chance to see you soon. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth serving the Lord through your lives. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at one 888 3836277 for details your rest, come with your grace and